So in this first example, we're going to do a very, very simple design on the FPGA. Quite simply, it's going to be one of these slide switches, as you can see um, on the picture here, connected through the FPGA to an LED. So when we change the position of the switch, it should turn the LED on or off. So this is perhaps one of the most simple designs you can do on an FPGA, so it's good uh, to get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open Quartus and then make sure I have the DE0 Nano user manual because that has the pin assignments that we'll need later because later on, we're gonna have to tell Quartus which pins to connect into and out of the FPGA. And for those, it's gonna be the, uh, the, the dip switches. So we're gonna to have to pick one of those and then one of the LEDs, which should become clear a bit later. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna to go to File, New Project Wizard, Next. And this is really important. If you are new to Quartus, this is the first place where it can go horribly wrong. So what you need to do here is make a directory for your project. So I'm gonna choose um, on the E drive and I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call it example. It's good practice to make sure you have a dedicated folder for each new project. And I'm gonna call this project my example one. Another thing you have to remember here is do not have spaces in the path name or any kind of special character. Okay, so just keep everything as simple as possible like this. Right, so next is going to be an empty project. We don't have any files to add. And this is the next place where things can, can go wrong. So we've got a Cyclone 4 E FPGA. And if I remember correctly, the code for the FPGA is this one. So you can verify this by looking at the, um, the code on the FPGA. This is the, the best picture to look at. EP4C E22 F17C6. So I think it asks the C6, so it's that one. So as you can see, we have 22,000 logic elements, 154 I.O. pins, and about 600,000 memory bits. So make sure that FPGA is selected. If you pick the wrong FPGA, the compiler will compile the design for a different device, and it's, and it's not going to work. So make sure that's selected. Uh, this is the final part of the wizard, EDA tool settings. So simulation is always model sim Altera. We're not going to simulate today, but that's one you have to remember next time and the rest we can leave as, uh, as default. So now we're into the project and we're going to be going down the programming design flow. So remember there's two possible routes you can go down with uh, this kind of design. One is simulation where you actually um, you don't have the board, you just want to simulate your design by writing a test bench. And the second way is programming. That's when you actually have a board, so you want to make your design and then program the board and actually realize the design in the FPGA. This is going to be the latter. So what we need to do is make, if we go to files, there's nothing there at the moment. As our project builds up, you'll see various files here. So what we need to do is make, go to File, New, Block Diagram Schematic File. And you sort of get a, a blank space here. Now this is kind of like the high, the top level entity of your design in the programming uh, route. Okay, because within this, this blank space, we can now put pins, we can make our own modules and put those in there. And you can kind of see your design build up in, in this block diagram schematic file. Now we have 
an incredibly simple design um, in this video. So we're not gonna have any of our own custom modules. That's gonna come a bit later. All we need to do is make sure we have an input pin. So I'm gonna to go to the pin tool here, select input. I'm gonna give this a name and I'm gonna call it switch. And then I think actually I will have a module. So I'm gonna to go to file, new, Verilog HDL file, and now we can create a module. In Verilog, designs are modular, so your design is within modules, and then you, you can instantiate modules within modules, and you always have a top-level entity, which is kind of like the top level, and then all of your modules fit within that top level. So to make a module, you just use the module key name, I'm going to call this one simple. That's the name of the module. And then you have the inputs and outputs from the module within the port list here. So then you have to define whether they're inputs or outputs. So in one is going to be an input. Out one is going to be an output. And then I'm going to use a simple assign statement just to pass the value of out one. Sorry, it's going to be the other way around. So out one is equal to in one end module. So this is the simplest possible module. In fact, this is just a, a wire which just takes the value of in one and outputs out one. So out one is actually the same as in one. So it's not actually doing anything, but it's good practice for you know how to write a, a module in Verilog. So what I'm gonna do now is save the, the Verilog HDL file, and I'm gonna call it simple. So I always choose the same name here as the module name, and then save. Notice that that appears now in files in the project navigator. So that's there, so we can open it from there. And what we would like to do now is actually create a block out of this .v file and then put it in the BDF. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select create symbol file for current file. Um, now it wants us to name the block, the, sorry, the BDF file. So I'm just gonna call that block and it should create the, um, the block for simple.v. Sometimes you get an error which appears here, which you have to fix, but this one is okay. So I'm gonna double click in the BDF, look in project and you can see now the block has appeared. So within that block is our Verilog code. So I'm gonna select that and put it into the BDF and I'm gonna input into that block our switch pin. And then I'm gonna have an output pin come in from the block and that one, I'm going to name LED1. So now we've got the basics of our design. So what we need to do now is make sure the BDF is the top level entity, and then we do analysis and elaboration. So analysis and elaboration on the programming design flow, it's kind of like a simple check of the code um, so it checks if there's any mistakes in the code. And once that's done, if we go to project and then, uh, sorry, assignments and pin planner, you can see our pins are now in the pin planner. So without analysis and elaboration, those pins would not be there. Okay, so that's another reason why you have to do analysis and elaboration. So now what we want to do now is make sure that this the switch is actually um, going into the FPGA. So what we want to do is look at the pin assignment for one of these switches. So I'm gonna look inside the, um, the document here and if we go down, so I'm gonna pick pin M1. So that's dip switch zero. So just put that in there, M1. 
Um, ah, sorry. <laughs> I got that the wrong way around. So it should be the switch. Pin M1. And then pick an LED. So I'm going to pick LED 0, which is one of the green LEDs. And that's going to be A15. Pin A15. And then close. You can see now that those pin assignments are associated with the pins. Now that basically completes the design. So all that's left to do now is to run compilation. So compilation is, is a much more intensive operation compared to analysis and elaboration because compilation is taking your design and actually compiling it into something that the FPGA can understand. So sometimes if you have a complex, sophisticated design, compilation can take a fairly long time. But with a simple design like this, there's not really that much for it to think about. There's not much optimization to do because it does, you know, it tries to optimize for uh, resource usage, timing, all that kind of stuff. And that can take a long time. This one should be finished very, very quickly. So I'm going to press the start compilation button. So this should be finished very, very quickly. Right. Okay. So once that's done, the compilation has been successful. By the way, it's not always uh, successful. This is such a simple design. There were no uh, errors. What you need to do is go to tools, programmer, make sure your board is connected and then make sure hardware setup is um, is selecting the USB blaster, which is the, um, the hardware device that's used to program the, the board. Then make sure your design is here. So when you do compilation, it produces a .sof file in output files. If that's not there, then you might need to go to add file and make sure that um, SOF file is actually there. Once that's all in place, just hit start. You'll see the device will program and you can see the LED is on. And what we can do to prove the design is working is change the state of the switch. Now it's not very user friendly because these switches are so tiny, so I'm using actually a shot key diode here to do this but you can see as I turn this switch on and off the LED is on and off and that's because we have very simple logic inside the FPGA which is routing the signal from the switch through the FPGA and then out to the LED this is the simplest of designs but the design flow that we've just been through is the same even for complicated designs and it only comes with repetition so don't take it for granted it's always better to start simple but we will make this design more sophisticated in the next video